You are now listening to the War Report Podcast Network. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the College Loop Podcast. It's the 219 of the College Loop Podcast. I am Don Lark, at your boy Dink, on Twitter. Here to talk to you all about the latest in Auburn football, and we're going to be starting our position breakdown series for the Thursday installments of the College Loop Podcast, starting off with the quarterbacks, of course. So just to get right into it before we get into some news towards the ending of the show. So Auburn's going into this year with really only one veteran quarterback on the roster. Holden Garner, of course, has been on the team for about three years now, um, but never really emerging as a top uh, option for the quarterback spot. Last year for Holden Garner, 5 of 15 for 75 yards with an interception. Uh, no touchdowns for Mr. Garner. Uh, Hank Brown did get a chance to come out and shine during the Music City Bowl, where, of course, I kind of chalked it up to a little bit of garbage time, but he came out and he performed very well, 7 of 9, 132 yards as well. And, of course, Peyton Thorne is going to be the starting quarterback for the Auburn Tigers in 2024, going for a completion percentage of 61.1, uh, 1,755 yards, two, 16 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. Also got sacked 31 times. And, of course, last guy to talk about really is Walker White. Uh, so just kind of going through the – looking at this breakdown, looking at this position group as a whole, it does leave a lot to be desired in terms of – there's not a guy to really turn to that you can feel the most confident in if Peyton Thorne were to go down towards uh, in the middle of a game. Um, Of course you kind of, we haven't gotten an official depth chart yet, but I think a lot of people are on the side of maybe it's Hank Brown's turn to be the second string quarterback. Uh, We did not see a lot of Holden Garner where he truly showed that why he was impressive um, in the spring, I mean, we saw, and that's a lot of quarterbacks gonna look really good in the spring, but Holden Garner never really emerged uh, as the second string quarterback until, of course, Robbie Ashford transferred out. It was Peyton Thorne, then Robbie, and then Holden Garner would get in in emergency situations. But going to this year, I could not be more surprised if it does not look like Hank Brown is going to be the backup quarterback. Of course, Holden Garner has more experience. Than, than Hank Brown does. But looking at the, the production from last year, um, I mean, Holden got in in the same, I think played maybe one drive or two maybe um, of the Music City Bowl and did not look poised at all. Did not look like a guy who's been in college for two years. Um, and then Hank Brown came in and played the best out of all three quarterbacks that went in. Um, but I, I do not see a world where, anyone else can perform better than Peyton Thornwell this year. So Walker White, I think, is all but redshirted. I don't know if it's been officially named yet, but I do believe he is going to be redshirted going into the 2020, going into the season. Um, then it leaves your three guys. And, of course, there's going to be – talk about this every single time because I still get comments about how, why they think Peyton Thorn shouldn't be the quarterback. If, if Auburn – if you freeze one or the different quarterback starting – he would have got a transfer. That's the simple point of that. Peyton Thorne is going to be your most veteran-laden um, a, a quarterback on the roster. He is, of course, going into his, I believe, his fifth year as a quarterback or as a basketball player. Yeah, correct. Fifth year. Um, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be Peyton Thorne. I'm sorry for everybody who doesn't like Peyton Thorne. I don't know why you can't just suck it up. I'm sorry. Um, but he is going to be the starting quarterback for the Auburn Tigers. No one else really gives Auburn the chance right away <laughs> to win games like Pey- what Peyton Thorne does. And of course, going to be a lot of people who don't like, didn't like his production last year. Of course, that's an issue that went on, and I can't deny that part. Peyton Thorne had games where he looked bad last year. There were times where every player on the team looked bad. New Mexico State comes to mind right away. No one looked good against Mexico State. But going into this year, there's the sense of hope that the the quarterback developing coaching staff can develop the quarterbacks that are put in place. Hugh Freeze, again, has said multiple, multiple, multiple times. 
He didn't want to pay a million dollars for a one-year rental quarterback. He wanted to show his skills at developing the quarterbacks that he already has, whether that have been Hank Brown, whether it had been Walker White right off the gate, because Walker White's been here through the spring, um, whether it be, you know, Holden Gurner. But Peyton Thorne has not faltered from the starting job. It has been Peyton Thorne. He's going to be the starting quarterback. He went with the starting quarterback going through the spring, going into the summer, going into the, again, he's going to be the starting quarterback going into the fall. That doesn't change anything. This the, and of course, yeah, who knows who Auburn picks up in the class twenty twenty five? They were definitely hunting for a quarterback to pick up for class twenty twenty five. Definitely got Walker White going to kind of hold off on a year to kind of wait for him to get, you know, more development. But going into this year, out of the three quarterbacks that are the most like opportunistic to get that starting job, Peyton Thorne is your best option. And I know, again, just it baffles me how often I have to talk about this with just the, the sheer amount of fans that don't like that that is the reality of things is that Peyton Thorne is your starting quarterback. And I, I can't, I'm trying to think back of like last time this was really like a huge issue, but I guess like uh, the Harson era was all of that. Um, but like going further than that, I know people hated when Jeremy Johnson was named the quarterback, starting quarterback again, or when Sean White was named the quarterback again. Um, and probably aren't the best examples to kind of waver into this, but as a fan base, and this speaking, I'm not going analytical, Dylan. I'm going more, I'm going Auburn fan, Dylan. It is so important that even if you don't like Peyton Thorne, even if you don't want to admit that Peyton Thorne is the best quarterback on the roster right now, even if you don't want to admit that the best chance to win is under the helm of Peyton Thorne quarterback, you cannot deny that he is the starting quarterback for your favorite team. So his best to just support the quarterback, if he doesn't perform well, Hugh Freeze will take him out of the game. Let the man coach his team. But looking at the position as a whole, it's it's so hard to grade this quarterback room because you only really have Peyton Thorne to judge off of. It's a C, strictly because it's Peyton Thorne, and then you got a couple of backups that haven't really played meaningful snaps outside of you know the last five minutes of the New York City Bowl and then Hank Holden Garner whenever he can get in. Um, C. I think is a fair thing. Um, C plus, I'll kind of go up a little bit, but yeah, as a whole, this position group is just not experienced. I guess that's the word. I, not experienced seems like the perfect like mid mid like middle of the pack level. Of course, I've done my SEC quarterback rankings before. Peyton Thorne finished, I think, around the ten spot, which isn't necessarily bad. The SEC is very quarterback heavy. Because uh, of course we got like guys like Carson Beck and Quinn Ewers, um, uh, Jackson Arnold, who's coming in, who I don't even think I ranked above Peyton Thorne. I think I probably put him like right above him, if that. Jalen Milrow, all the Graham Mertz, even a guy who impressed me last year. But looking at the SEC quarterbacks as a whole, of course Peyton Thorne's not going to be your Heisman front runners like the like Jalen Milrose and Carson Beck is, and not going to have the height that Nico Iamaleva is is having right now at Tennessee. He's going to be the guy who is going to get you yards. He's not going to make flashy plays all the time. He's it'll probably happen once in a blue moon. And it'll be spectacular when it happens. But we, we've already established this before. We've talked about it several times this offseason that you've gotten the best of Peyton Thorne is above average uh, to, to good. I would even say above average to good is kind of the max you're expecting from Peyton Thorne. And that's not a bad place to be, especially whenever you're looking at guys that you're trying to develop like Walker White, potentially Juju Lewis, potentially anybody you pick up from class 2025. You just want that bridge quarterback to be just good enough to where you're competing for, the, I don't want to say titles right now, but definitely competing more heavily in games. I mean, I've seen several people come out and say Auburn's going to go 7-5 and five this year. Auburn has everything in place to win nine games this year. They have that. They have the schedule that's, I mean, the away games suck, but the home games are all favorable in a sense that only two of them are really 50-50 games to me um, in Oklahoma and Texas A&M. And, of course, your away games are 
Kentucky, which I think is a very winnable away game. And then you have Missouri, Alabama, and Georgia, which right now I'm I'm tossing those, not even looking back. Uh, wait till the season comes for me to start wavering in that whatsoever. But again, we've talked about this before. If Peyton Thorne, I think, just shows out and throws like 2,500 yards, I think uh, what, James Barnett, uh, loyal fan, friend of the show, uh, was <laughs> said this, and I, I completely agree with him. If Peyton Thorne throws 2,500 passing yards, Auburn's winning nine games. I, I think it's simple as that. The run game's going to be super heavy. The wide receiver room is the best it's been in years, or most talented it's been in years. We'll judge it after the end of the season based on how good they looked. Tight ends are perfect safety blankets for quarterbacks that – don't have a good offensive line. And the offensive line has staunchly improved since last year. I don't think you're going to see 31 sacks given up. Um, 34 is in total because uh, Robbie Ashford and Holden Gardner got sacked three times combined. But that that's just something that I, I'm going to stick with that throughout. I'm going to rant about it every single time I need to whenever quarterbacks come up because Auburn Vans, it is time to get behind Peyton Thorne because, good Lord, we do not need another season of quarterback controversy every single year that it happens. It's gone on for the past two years in a row. I, excuse me, it's been going on since 2018 because um, I was a part of that first group of college students that went through the into year two of the Jarrett Stidham era, where I heard a bunch of people say bench Jarrett Stidham for Malik Willis. And the next year, it was. Um, <laughs> bench bow for joey gatewood uh and then it was uh bench bow let tj throw which i still hate anybody who said that unironically um and then after that it was just the harson era which is just all kinds of gross to talk about get behind your quarterback get behind peyton thorne he's gonna be your starting quarterback <laughs> for maximum oh, i'm gonna say 13 games a maximum. I don't want to do that because that might sound bad. For potentially 13 games. That's it. And then after that, he's graduated. He's going to go try his hand at the NFL. Don't know if he'll get drafted. He'll have to have a great last year on the planes to get drafted. But with that, that kind of does it for that. What's your uh, prediction on the quarterback situation? Do you think it's going to be the back quarterback behind Peyton Thorne? What are your stat predictions for how you think Peyton Thorne is going to perform in 2024. And of course, next week we'll be starting off. We'll be going to the next step of our system breakdown with the running back room, which got a lot more players to talk about because that's going to be a room that shares a lot uh, of plays together. And a lot of carries are going to be shared amongst that group because that group is just outstandingly good. So <laughs> after, before we get into the rest of the show, of course we got a nice little, nice little ad break. But before we do, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in to College Loop Podcast. And, of course, if you're listening on the on Spotify Podcast, Google Podcast, or Amazon Music, thank you for doing that as well. Make sure to rate five stars. Make sure if you're on YouTube to like, comment, and subscribe. Again, as I said before, just leave your comments on the quarterback situation. And we'll be right back after this little ad break talking about our outstanding merch. This way you can support the show. So we'll be right back. Are you tired of having to rummage through just clothes after clothes after clothes looking for something to wear? Are you tired of your friends making fun of you for your terrible fashion sense? Well, do we have the shirt for you? Go to thewarport.com, get your laptop out and do it right now. Go to the shop and get your very own Feeling Loopy t-shirt as well as your college loop hat. And you can get both of them for only $25 each. Plus shipping and handling, of course. But with that, now back to your regular scheduled program. And of course, those shirts are on the second page of the World Poor Shop. So you can go to the link description below and you can click the link. And go get your Feeling Loopy t-shirt, which comes in five different colorways. Most comfortable shirt you're going to wear in your entire life. And of course, on the first page of the shop is, of course, the College Loop hat. So best gifts to give to anybody who has birthdays coming up. Get them some Feeling College Loop merch. The Feeling Loop t-shirt, of course, can't overstate this enough most comfortable shirt you're ever going to wear in your entire life but with that let's kind of move on to the remainder of the show because ea college football 2025 is coming out in just under a month actually 20 days or uh, 20, 20 20 i'll say 20 days just give it 20 days and they released 
Um, there are 25 toughest places to play in the country, and holy cow, this is this might be the second worst thing to come out from the college football game outside of the can't play high school football and road to glory. Um, but Auburn currently stands at 14 um, behind a lot of schools where I am very shocked to see them behind um, starting off with Texas A&M at number one. I think that's a stupid decision to have them number one. Of course they do have a very loyal fan base and they have one of the biggest stadiums in the country, but home field advantage that's not Texas A&M, um, but two at, Alabama, two at Alabama, I don't think Alabama. Alabama and Georgia both being top five kind of irks me the wrong way in the sense of I don't think it's really home field advantage as much as it is those teams have been really good in the past. So the fans have shown up because the teams are really good. Um, that's just my opinion, maybe a little biased. Um, but Auburn's behind Wisconsin. They're behind Florida State. They're behind Oregon. They're behind, <laughs> which I don't think that. I, and this is not just me being a biased Auburn fan saying all this. This is something I completely agree with that a lot of people have been saying as well. Auburn is objectively too low on this list. Uh, I, I don't think there's ever been a team um, that has sold out a three three win team versus a three win team, and then everyone just goes buck wild seats are sold out swag surfing just to get your getting your fourth win of course that was when cadillac's first home game back from the uh as the interim head coach auburn and 14 is blasphemous i mean auburn in top 10 would be fine with i can cope a little bit with it uh and i actually i'm satisfied with the top 10 i don't think auburn gets in the top five but lsu and penn state should be one two uh, I don't think that's baffling and that's slightest to say that th- those are the top two places, toughest places to play in the country. Anyone who's ever <laughs> seen the environments that those two have, that's 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 the toughest place to play. Uh, but I just think it's stupid that Auburn is 14. Um, I'm still going to be playing the game, so I have it pre-ordered. <laughs> so uh, catch some of that gameplay out, maybe on this channel, maybe on Warport, uh, and on the Warport Gaming. So you'll see that in just a month, just under a month. So yeah, leave your thoughts on that in the comment section below. Do you think what do you think all where do you think Auburn ranks in terms of toughest places to play in the country? And do you think Auburn should be in the top five or top ten? Definitely, I no one thinks it should be ten below. So uh, with that, the last little bit of football news we got before we move on to basketball and some softball news, um, which I could probably combine the the last football and softball news because it can it kind of goes with goes in the same theme of things. Carday Smith, a four-star uh, offensive tackle who originally committed to Auburn in April, has since decommitted uh, as of yesterday from the Auburn Tigers. Um, as far as I'm aware and what I've seen, he it was a mutual parting of ways between the two. Uh, of course, I believe he was just on a visit not too long ago from USC, and a lot of USC fans that I've seen around the place pretty much think that he's a he's a lock for for USC. Um, but I'm not going to fret too much about about it. Um, Auburn's picked up, has got a lot of great offensive linemen coming um, that are still committed. Um, it does suck losing one of your top players in, in four star, but um, a lot of the Auburn's not in panic mode whatsoever. Um, I, I still think Auburn's still going to finish with the top five class. Um, of course, this dropped them to eight. Not a far drop. I mean, Auburn lost a four star and didn't fall out of the top ten which can't say that for a lot of other schools that they had lost a four-star. Um, this class is still loaded. It's going to be loaded. Uh, then they are not finished yet recruiting. So I'm not going to be in a panic mode situation at all. So you shouldn't be either. Uh, and then softball news uh, kind of goes along the same theme. Annabelle Weidra, Miss AB herself, the third baseman slash pitcher for the Auburn Tigers, has – transferred and went to Florida State, which I am so annoyed with. Um, I wish her the best of luck, but it's been back-to-back years where Auburn's had a player leave for the team that eliminated them from the postseason. Last year, Lindsey Garcia transferred to Clemson. Now this year, AB is transferring to Florida State. I'm I'm okay with the transfer. <laughs> Why does it got to always be the team that beat Auburn in the postseason? Uh, again, wish her the best of luck. I mean, Auburn and Florida State don't typically meet that much in, in softball. So 
wish her the best of luck. Um, I just hate that it had to be the school that <laughs> took down Auburn in the in the regionals. Um, and then the last bit of news we got today, um, the NBA draft went on last night, the first round at least, and they finally did the smartest thing ever and moved the second round to the next night, which I had completely forgotten about. I sat watching the NBA draft for like 30 minutes after it went off and wondering why the second round hasn't started yet. But, of course, Jalen Williams is the only Auburn Tiger in the draft this year, um, the winningest player in Auburn basketball history. Um, and he fell out of the first round, which pretty expected – um, I don't think anybody really had a first grade, first round grade on Jay Will, um, but I do think that he should be considered heavily considered by coaches and uh, and franchises in the second round. I think that you're looking at a guy who could be one of the most underrated players taken in this draft if he gets taken. Of course, if he doesn't, I mean the most underrated player <laughs> that was a um, undrafted free agent uh, signing, but. Just what Jay Will brings to a team in terms of his consistency and just his energy that he brought on like so heavily in his in his last year at, at Auburn, it, it, it I I can not wish for it enough for the Oklahoma City Thunder to draft Jalen Williams strictly because we talk about this all the time. The Jay Will to Jay Will to Jay Will connection would be just so funny to watch, especially as a commentator kind of calling that would be hilarious. Um, but Jay Will bring so much to it can bring so much to a team in terms of just his leadership, his consistency. Again, he, he was a great shooter and whenever he was on, he was unstoppable. Um, I, I just, I, and I've seen a lot of, he's gone off, on, gone up on a lot of draft boards. I know a lot of people said he could sneak into the second round, which I think that he's pretty like uh, sure of, of doing, I, I would, I would be upset with like in and of myself if, Jay Wood did not get picked up in the second round. Of course, I'm there's a certain <laughs> other player who's been hyped up a lot who might get drafted before Jay Wood does that I would be a little upset about him getting drafted ahead of. Um, i.e. Barney James, who did not play as well as Jay Will did last year or at all in Jay Will <laughs> throughout his career. Um, but I'm not I'm not an NBA, I'm not in the NBA for an office. What do I know? Um, but yeah, I think Jay will definitely the guy who uh, NBA franchise should be looking at as maybe not a right away starter, but a depth piece down the line, especially if I have to go to the G league for a few, for a few months, hopefully. Um, but I, I guess I'm just, I could be again, just more bias coming out. I just think Jay will could fit in very well with the franchise. Um, but we'll have to see at the end of the NBA draft tonight, um, of course, we will not have a show until the Sunday show where I will be in West Virginia uh, going live. So that'll be another Eastern time zone for me to have to adjust to again. Um, but again, with that, that'll do it for this installment of the College Week Podcast. I'm, of course, Dylan Lark. That's at your boy, the tank on Twitter at Y-A-B-O-Y, the tank. And of course, come on Instagram as well at Dylan Lark at D-Y-L-E-N-L-E-R-C-K. And of course, come right here in the College Week Podcast. We should like, comment, and subscribe where and again leave your thoughts on the Auburn quarterback situation do you think Peyton Thorne should be the starter do you think he shouldn't be is there nice ways for you to say that in the comment section below and of course leave your predictions for the stat leaders for the quarterbacks in 2024 and of course don't forget next Thursday we're going to be doing the running backs and of course next Tuesday is going to be our next our week five season preview of how can Auburn perform against their it's their first time SEC opponent, uh, Oklahoma Sooners. So, uh, of course, if you're tired of seeing my face, completely understandable. Uh, the Spotify podcast, Google Podcast, Amazon Music are around for the audio versions of the show. But, of course, all that being said, thanks for tuning in to this time of the College Loop Podcast. I'm Dylan Lark again, War Eagle. And, <laughs> again, this has been the College Loop Podcast. Mm-hmm.